As we explored in Part 3 of this four-part Mechanism of Action animation series, activation of the N-methyl deaspartate receptor, NMDAR, requires both the agonist glutamate and a coagonist like glycine or deserine, in addition to membrane depolarization to remove the magnesium block from the ion channel at the center of the NMDAR. As noted, boosting glutamate levels in order to compensate for the NMDAR hypofunction we see in the asynchronous cortical network underlying cognitive impairment associated with schizophrenia, CIAS, is just not a feasible strategy. Glutamate's actions are simply too ubiquitous at various receptors throughout the brain. For similar reasons, directly increasing levels of coagonists, glycine or deserine, are not optimal strategies. However, one strategy we alluded to at the conclusion of Part 3 involves indirectly increasing glycine levels by inhibiting the removal of glycine from the synapse. Here, in Part 4, we'll explore the state of the science when it comes to glycine transporters and their inhibition as a potential treatment for CIAS. Reuptake transporters help to maintain the balance of synaptic levels of neurotransmitters. After a neurotransmitter is released into the synapse to act on its receptors, a transporter removes the neurotransmitter from the synapse and transports it back into a neuron or glial cell. There are specific reuptake transporters for a variety of neurotransmitters, and if we pharmacologically inhibit a reuptake transporter from removing its respective neurotransmitter from the synapse, we can expect that synaptic levels of that neurotransmitter will be elevated. Glycine actually has two types of glycine transporters, GLY-T1 and GLY-T2. Both GLY-T1 and GLY-T2 are sodium chloride dependent. However, the similarities end there. GLY-T1 is found abundantly in the prefrontal cortex and hippocampus and is associated with excitatory NMDAR at glutamatergic synapses. GLY-T2 is found in areas of the brainstem, spinal cord, and cerebellum and is associated with inhibitory glycinergic synapses. With regards to this four-part Mechanism of Action animation series discussing NMDAR hypofunction in cortical networks underlying CIAS, we will be focusing on GLY-T1. Within excitatory glutamatergic synapses, GLY-T1 can be found on both presynaptic and postsynaptic neuron terminals, as well as on astrocytes. In its reuptake mode, GLY-T1 serves to remove glycine from the synapse. As we noted in Part 3 of this animation series, GLY-T1 also has the ability, in just the right conditions, to function in reverse mode, whereby GLY-T1 transports glycine from inside the astrocyte into the glutamatergic synapse, increasing glycine levels there. For the purpose of this animation, we'll concentrate on GLY-T1's reuptake function, where it serves to remove glycine from the synapse. With its concentrated location in cortical areas where NMDAR hypofunction is thought to underlie excitatory inhibitory or EI imbalance, network asynchrony, and consequent CIAS, GLY-T1 may provide an ideal therapeutic target for increasing glycine specifically in areas where a boost of glycine may be beneficial. The pharmacological inhibition of GLY-T1, but not GLY-T2, using a selective GLY-T1 inhibitor has been shown to result in a rise in cortical glycine levels. With glycine levels at glutamatergic synapses within the cortical network elevated, there is more glycine available to bind in its coagonist capacity at the NR1 subunits in hypofunctional NMDAR located on PV-plus GABAergic interneurons. 
This will hypothetically improve NMDAR functioning, resulting in activation of the inhibitory PV plus GABAergic interneurons. As we discussed in part two of this animation series, activation of those PV plus GABAergic interneurons and subsequent release of inhibitory GABA onto excitatory glutamatergic pyramidal neurons is critical for establishing synchrony and maintaining the EI balance in cortical networks. One high-affinity, non-competitive GLI-T1 inhibitor studied in clinical trials is bitapertin. Although early trials were promising, ultimately, bitapertin was withdrawn from further clinical trials due to lack of efficacy for CIAS as well as troubling adverse events. However, much was learned from the studies of bitapertin and allowed for a greater understanding and fine-tuning of novel GLI-T1 inhibitors. For instance, it now seems clear that ideally we want to increase levels of glycine enough to compensate for NMDAR hypofunction in order to improve cognition and schizophrenia. However, if we increase glycine levels too much, not only will we cause adverse effects, but the excess glycine at the NMDAR-NR1 subunits may actually lead to the removal of NMDAR from the postsynaptic density via endocytosis. For this reason, GLI-T1 inhibition seems to require careful dosing as well as the partial, slow and steady, handshake approach like dopamine transporter inhibition by a stimulant in the treatment of ADHD rather than the hard and fast 90% occupancy high five approach like serotonin transporter inhibition by SSRIs in the treatment of depression. One such potent and selective GLI-T1 inhibitor, icloperton, has been shown to achieve and maintain 50% blockade of GLI-T1 and has received FDA breakthrough therapy status due to its procognitive benefits in patients with schizophrenia. As with many treatment strategies in various psychiatric conditions, the combination of pharmacological and behavioral therapies may be the most effective approach when it comes to CIAS. Indeed, there are ongoing trials combining GLI-T1 inhibition with cognitive training underway. How is cognition measured in these studies of GLI-T1 inhibitors and other therapeutic strategies for ameliorating CIAS? Recall that in Part 1 of this animation series, we discussed the NIMH Measurement and Treatment Research to Improve Cognition in Schizophrenia, or MATRIX, initiative. It is therefore not surprising that the gold standard for measuring cognition in schizophrenia recommended by the FDA is the MATRIX Consensus Cognitive Battery, or MCCB. The MCCB includes 10 tests that measure 7 cognitive domains commonly impaired in patients with schizophrenia, including speed of processing, attention, working memory, verbal learning, visual learning, reasoning and problem solving, and social cognition. To summarize what we have learned in this four-part Mechanism of Action animation series, GLI-T1 inhibition leads to increased glycine in the cortex, which then binds as a coagonist at NR1 subunits on hypofunctional NMDAR on PV plus GABAergic interneurons in the cortical network, allowing for increased stimulation of PV plus GABAergic interneurons by glutamate coming from glutamatergic pyramidal neurons in the cortical network restoring the EI balance and synchronizing the firing of glutamatergic pyramidal cells in the cortical network, potentially leading to improvements in cognitive impairment associated with schizophrenia.